Hello and welcome back everyone. I'm sure you've heard many flat earthers state that the horizon always rises to eye level. People like this. The horizon is rise to the eye level and we see the buildings. And this. I can safely say that the horizon is at eye level. And let's not forget this guy. As we rise up. Dun, dun, dun. Look at that, the horizon remains at our eye level. Okay. <laughs> okay. Da, da, da. So, uh, many people have disproved this in the past, but this is one observation I'd never made before. And as I was about to fly from uh, northern Italy to London in the UK a couple of weeks ago, uh, I thought I'd do what many flat earthers have told me to do so many times and do my own research. So this is the view from the ground just prior to takeoff. As you can see, I'm using a Theodolite app on my iPhone and at ground level, the horizon lines up uh, perfectly at zero degrees. Now, the mainstay of science is the ability to make predictions. So before we look at the photos I took at altitude, Let's look at the expected horizon angles we should expect if the Earth is a globe with a 6,731 kilometer radius. So we'll start with the calculation for my highest altitude, that was 38,000 feet. Now here's the Earth, and here's the uh, plane, with the Earth's center point represented by this red dot. This should be obvious, but none of this is to scale. This is the line of sight to the horizon, and these two lines represent the distances to the center of the Earth from the horizon and from the plane. Now, because the line of sight is a line tangent to the circle, and tangent lines are always at 90 degrees to radial lines, we know that this is a right angle triangle with a distance to the Earth's center of 6,731 kilometers and the distance from the plane to the center at 6,742.6 kilometers. Uh, this is just the radius of the Earth plus my altitude. So I'll first calculate this angle just here. Now I know the opposite side and the hypotenuse from this angle, but any school kid will tell you we need to use sine. And here's the calculation. I won't go through it, but we work out that the angle A here is 86.6 .6 degrees. Now, as the eye level line will be at 90 degrees to the line to the Earth's center, then our horizon drop is simply 90 minus 86.6, which is 3.4 degrees. Simple. Now, doing, this, doing the same thing at 20,000 feet, the angle works out at 2.4 degrees. And doing this at 4,000 feet, uh, it's 1.1 degrees. So now let's take a look at the measurements that I took during the flight. First at 38,000 feet, you can see there that the crosshairs are centered on the horizon and the measured angle I got was 4.2 degrees below level. Now we predicted 3.4 degrees, so that's not bad, that's fairly close. Next at 20,000 feet, just under, uh, again crosshairs centered on the horizon and the theodolite on the right hand side there is showing a 2 degree drop below level to the horizon, and we had estimated 2.4 degrees. So again, pretty close. And finally at 4,000 feet, we have a measured angle below eye level of 1.3 degrees, and our estimate was 1.1 degrees. So very close there to, uh, to what we actually observed. So there you go. Not only does the horizon most definitely drop below eye level, According to my measurements, it does so in close accordance with the expected values. And that's based on the values the nameless, faceless they give us for the size of the Earth. I'll just leave you with this photo, with the camera perfectly level, as you can see from the zero, very, very slightly below level reading on the right hand side. Now look at the position of the horizon in relation to the wing, uh, and how far the horizon is below the crosshairs and compare this to the photo taken on the ground. So next time someone tells you the horizon stays at eye level, make sure you set them straight. 
Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate every single person that takes the time to watch, like, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you next time.